All right, the last video I called more refined painting of the face. And this video will probably be more of the same. So I hope to get get around to the um, the chest and the the uniform as well. But just lots of refined painting. Don't zoom in more than you need to but zoom in enough to get the level of finish you want. And it does get easier as you go because you get more familiar with kind of what works, what parameters you need. But if there's one section that you kind of ignored in your shape painting, that's going to take a little bit longer with your refined painting. So you have to build it in layers, like putting the brown underneath in my case, and some of the color in there. And it's good to keep in mind for your final projects that you want to build some level of finish, meaning that each area feels as considered as every other area. So if I spend a lot of time and I make the eye really strong, the problem with that is that now the viewer expects all of it to be that clear and sharp. So you want to find the level that you can bring everything up to instead of just working on the eye, for instance, even with this these hairs over the top of it. Whatever I do there, I want to be able to bring into the rest of it. Even though the eye is a lot more fun to work on than some of the other parts. So that's what I mean by finish, bringing everything to the same resolution. And that can be quite trying and difficult. And that's why not everyone likes digital painting. It comes with its challenges, for sure. That's why I like to have a lot of variation in color in my shape painting underneath, so that when I do refine painting over the top, it doesn't wash it out. And sometimes I gotta go back and restate some of these bold colors. so that I can then steal from them again. The more you kind of state your edges and restate, the more depth they'll be to that finished painting. And I have the white background turned on instead of the gray background. It helps me on this gray dog, it helps me kind of see the edges that I'm painting a little bit better. But it can be helpful to go back and forth. If I only painted on a white background, then everything I painted would eventually get a little too uh, washed out. It wouldn't have the full value range because I wouldn't be seeing the highlights as clearly that are needed. Yep. 
So if you want to bring up your brush options, if you just hold down control while you click, you can bring up your brush options. And then for your brush settings, should be a shortcut for that too, but I'm escaping me right now. And then people that use their own tablets, they can set them up to have all kinds of helpful shortcuts. So you never have to, you know, move around the screen too much while you're painting. So you see, you're plenty busy just making a lot of marks. I think my favorite part is being able to kind of mix the colors right on the screen by just layering them over each other. You're doing a mix of actual mixing because of the opacity and optical mixing because you're putting them next to each other. But it gives a nice depth. So just don't lose your sense of light and shadow as you're doing that. But you have other digital tools as well. You could always use dodge and burn or set your brush to multiply or set your brush to lighten. You know, there's ways to control this. I'm just showing you kind of the most direct. And as you figure out your own process, that becomes your preferred digital painting workflow, the way you like to work. The tools, the approaches, the order that works for you is your workflow. Just like you'll create your own workflow for your final project. All right, let's define the ear a little bit. Is my brush so big all of a sudden? Ah. happening. Let's see, why is that happening? There. I'm clicking wrong place. So I didn't have quite enough of a value base layer on the ear here. So doing my, my little light highlight hairs over the top, it didn't have any dark shadows underneath. So I need to establish those. So that can all be part of refined painting too. You try to keep a lot of energy in the process. And if you need to, you can switch to a different mode to build that darkness a little bit faster. But remember to turn it back, otherwise your brush won't be predictable when you change colors. Turn it back just to normal.
I can experiment with letting it get looser and looser as I get further away from the middle of the face. That's kind of a portrait convention where you lose focus as you pull away from the focal points. Makes sense. Softer focus, which might mean fewer brush strokes. But you still want it to feel fully considered, even on the boring parts like the top of the head. So just leaving that underpainting on its own just doesn't seem considered enough. So though I can approach it pretty quickly, I still need to address all these issues. even if it's not as much of a focal point as the, the nose and the eyes. I think it's a strength of painting that you get to direct the viewer's eyes to where you want it to take in the most information, whereas a photograph, often everything's just dealt with in a single focus. A good fo photographer can use the framing, the composition, to direct the viewer's focus, but a good painter can do that as well. And we are not slaves to our photo reference. We can improve upon it when we want to. So again, squinting a lot to make sure you're not losing the definition of your shape and your values. That's what really makes it your vision and your form. It is not color, it's just the lights and darks in your other place. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to try to tackle a little bit more of it. And often when I want to cover a little bit more ground more quickly, I take my brush up, my refined brush from around 50% to closer to 60 or 70%. So everything just has a little bit more impact immediately. It requires a little less blending. But it does mean I need to change colors a little bit more frequently. Otherwise, certain colors start to dominate. 